The game I chose for my review is StarCraft II. StarCraft II is a futuristic, real-time strategy game developed by Blizzard Entertainment that is set in a fictional universe centering around three unique races, the Human Terran, the Bug-like Zerg, and the Advanced Alien Protoss, each with their own playstyle, strengths, and weaknesses. StarCraft II includes a single-player story mode, an arcade mode that features custom community-made maps and games made with a free map editor tool, a co-op mode against AI enemies, and multiplayer, which is what the game is known and built for and what I will focus on in this review. The game starts with a few workers in a base. From there, the game progresses by accumulation of two resources, minerals, which are abundant and used for everything, and gas, which is limited but necessary for higher technology. Players then build up their bases, train their armies, and expand their territory across the map. The object of the game is simply to destroy all your opponent's buildings, however there are almost unlimited ways to do this which is both the beauty and the complexity of the game. The game requires a vast set of skills to perform well, conception and execution of a logical strategy, knowing how to budget resources, and the ability to solve problems and make split second decisions as they arise are essential. Much of the gameplay will consist of mastering micromanagement skills, which is the ability to use each individual unit to maximum efficiency. One example is this stalker unit on the left that in open combat would face defeat against these Zerg Roaches. However, using teleport on units that are low retains the numbers and maintains the damage output of the group, thus achieving victory. Each unit has a unique skill or strength, and the efficiency of using your unit's strengths and executing against your opponent's weaknesses is what separates the good from the great. You will also need navigational skills to interpret and analyze terrain on the map. Knowing how to use terrain to your advantage, such as choke points, compositional skills such as base layout and unit placement will increase your odds of success. High ground gives a sight advantage and some units such as this Colossus can take advantage of scaling between high and low ground while the Zergling can't. Knowledge of how to use terrain and great micromanagement skills gives a victory for the Colossus on what would otherwise overwhelm and quickly defeat the unit if placed in open combat. Recently StarCraft 2 has been used to test and advance Google's DeepMind AI technology. The team at DeepMind has already created AI that can beat the best humans in the world at Go, Chess, and Dota 2. They believe the skill level and factors needed to develop the StarCraft 2 AI far exceeds those games as StarCraft 2 requires a great deal of mechanical skill, split second decision making, and reliance on imperfect information. StarCraft 2 also brings with it many positive cognitive benefits. According to a 2014 article in the American Psychologist titled The Benefits of Playing Video Games, play fighting results in the release of chemical growth factors in the parts of the brain that are coordinated for highly social activities, thus promoting the growth and development of these areas. A study conducted by Glass, Maddox, and Love in 2013 split players into two groups. Some participants played The Sims while others played StarCraft, racking up 40 hours of gameplay over a period of one and a half to two months. Those who played StarCraft instead of The Sims showed measurable improvements in certain mental functions following the period of gaming. Results from StarCraft players showed coordination between multiple information and action sources sufficient to affect change, suggesting avenues for increased cognitive function. Another study from Magnusi and Associates in 2018 used diffusion tensor imaging to compare the structural brain connectivity of 31 frequent StarCraft II players to a control group of 31 men who were not gamers. It showed a positive association between network metrics and time spent playing RTS games, suggesting a close relationship between extensive long-term RTS gameplay and neuroplasticity changes. Those who played StarCraft II more often tended to have a greater number of connections between occipital and parental regions, which has been shown to reflect enhanced visual and spatial information processing.
Blizzard says Iomantry for their games is easy to learn, hard to master. Although the game is still very much designed and enjoyable to be played without having to know the ins and outs, one of the cons of the game is the learning curve. The game counters this partially by implementing personal skill ratings and placing you in leagues with people around your skill level, but it is not 100% foolproof. Having to buy all three games to experience each race in the story mode, as well as a generally accepted agreement on an underwhelming story and pricey extra features on Battle.net, leaves some room for improvement in the game. The game is only available on PC and Mac and requires a moderately powerful computer to run at an ideal level, although most modern computers can run it at an acceptable state. All in all, there aren't many cons of StarCraft 2, and it is a lot of fun to play, no matter what your skill level. The game has a lot to offer, and I could do a whole nother review on the story, arcade, and co-op modes also in the game, but I suggest checking out the game for yourself.